So where's the fine line between acknowledging who we are and acknowledging of what we're doing? It's a fascinating thing because I am the righteousness of God. I am no longer a, a, a sinner, but I am a sinner saved by grace. Where's, there's a line there somewhere that the Holy Spirit's convicting us of not to cross. Because he's saying, I must acknowledge when I sin. And we do. But at the same time, in other scripture, he's telling, stop calling yourself a sinner because you're no longer a sinner. You will sin. And it's that, it's that those words that he, he twists on. Let's go into, into chapter 2 and see if he uh, gives us a little more hope. My little children, believers, dear ones, I'm writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. And if anyone sins, he has an advocate who will intercede for us with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the upright, the just one who conforms to the Father's will in every way, purpose, thought, and action. Wow. I was like, why'd they make this chapter 2? They only had 10 verses in chapter 1. They could have made that verse 11. But they split it up because it's a, it's another, it's that paragraph thing. It's another thought because he's going to start talking about our advocate is Christ. But he could, it flows right in with 8, 9, and 10. I'm writing you things so that you will not sin. So if he's telling me I so he's writing things so that I will not sin, is there a possibility that I don't have to sin? That I can be perfect as far as not sinning? The possibility is the key word there. Because the Holy Spirit would not inspire him to write so that you will not sin if there wasn't a possibility for that. I fail. But I know, and I and I know I have the process. I know that God's made a way that I do not have to sin. And that's why in the other scriptures he talked about habitually sinning. So that it isn't a habit for you to sin. So that the, the, the flesh does no longer take control. You're thinking with your spiritual mind. You're using your mind as the flesh thoughts, but it's it's being controlled by the spirit. So we don't have to go through fulfilling whatever the flesh desires. You know, I want to fuss at this person. I want to berate this person. I want to do this. I want to do that. Or I, heck with what everybody else thinks. I'm going to do my own thing. Okay, Lord, what do you want to do? And that becomes our habit. What do we want to do? And, it, and, and he doesn't care. You know, Lord, right now I really want to ream this person out, but I don't think that's what you'd want to do. Give me strength. I write these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. And if anyone does sin, we have the advocate. Jesus is right there. In that, in, you know, in so many different analogies, you've heard about the courtroom in heaven, and the devil brings you up. This is this is the perpetrator, Lord. Ivan did this, you know, and he starts spitting out dates and all the craziness that I done. And then the judge looks at the defense attorney, Jesus, and goes. What say you? He said, Sir, when I look at his record, I see nothing. It's white as snow. Because I paid for that penalty. Well over 2,000 years ago now for us. But every time the enemy takes someone to, to the courtroom of heaven, Jesus stands up and said, Judge, I paid for that. They genuinely repented. They genuinely decided to change and turn their ways. I paid for that. This is no longer on their record. And the fascinating thing, it's no longer on our record whether we did it today or whether we do it this week. It's no longer on our record because Jesus' blood covers us for our whole life. So Jesus has already paid the price for something I may do this week that won't be according to His will. And that's fascinating to me. That should give us a little bit more peace. Because we, maybe we haven't established it with the righteousness of God. Maybe we understand we're a rascal and we're struggling and we're going through it trying to do our best and we fail every 30 seconds. But that should give us a little hope. It says, okay, 